The good news is I don't have to ask for uh, silence because that normally occurs during my act. Uh, no, I I'm having the time of my life doing stand-up comedy. Uh, I really can't think of any place else I'd rather be than right here, right now. I've got dementia. I can't think of a place. I'm trying. I I'm, I'm really trying. I am so full of the holiday spirit. We're about 90 minutes away from Hanukkah. That is so cool. I, this year, had the best Thanksgiving I have ever had. Me and my entire extended family of 137 Jews figured out a way that we could all be somewhere else on that day. In my house, Christmas came early. I knew Christmas came early because I was in Starbucks today. And this is what I heard. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donder and Blitzen. Here comes Santa Claus, there goes Santa Claus, down Starbuck Cup Lane. He doesn't care if it's Red or white, we'll just let you complain. Love the red cup, hate the red cup to us, it's all the same. We're getting free press, we couldn't care less, cause everyone says our name. Starbucks. A brilliant sponsor, this is it? Oh man. Uh, my name's Glenn Cohen, and it's plastered pretty much all over the walls of this place. If you went into anybody whose last name is O'Brien, you instantly know that person is Irish. You run into anybody named Cohen, you instantly know that person's Jewish. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I, I looked at Cohen in the dictionary three weeks ago. Cohen is the Hebrew word for O'Brien. <laughs> no, I may not look that tough, but when I was 12 years old, I hung out with a really tough gang in Hebrew school. No, no, you can tell me we're the tough kids. We all had leather yarmulkes. Uh, we even had our own form of self-defense. It's called Isu. That's a form of jujitsu. Uh, kid came up to me and goes, Glenn, can I talk to you about Jews for Jesus? I'm like, darn it! I just signed up with Bar Mitzvahs for Buddha. <laughs> oh, man. This is the Actors Temple. Uh, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and I have been a background person in over 300 major motion pictures. Yeah. I also have a degree in theater, so technically I'm a method extra. Uh, the one most important rule about being an extra is you cannot initiate a conversation with a star. If they talk to you like the Queen of England, yes, you can respond, but you cannot start that conversation. So six months ago, I get called to play a mourner at a wake. An Academy Award Best Actress, Holly Hunter, walked over to me and goes, well, they read the eulogy? You are going to come and comfort me. I'm like, cool. They call action. I walk over to Holly Hunter. I start gingerly stroking her arm. And I'm thinking, I'm getting paid for this. Then I got ballsy, and I bent over, and I whispered in her ear, I am so, so sorry for your loss. And she whispered back, thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. There isn't a punchline here, I'm just bragging. <laughs> no, she could have whispered back, shut the heck up, you're just an extra. But what made it a horrible experience for me, the guy doing the eulogy was Tony Shalhoub. 35 years ago, he and I played twins in an equity show. I must have taken like 40 showers with that guy. So the whole time he's doing the eulogy, I'm making as much eye contact as I possibly can, hoping he's going to recognize me. He never did. I got morosely depressed, and right before they arrested me, <laughs> I got blackout drunk, and they told me I was stark naked 
outside of Tony Shalhoub's trailer, screaming, Do you recognize me now, Tony? Do you recognize me now? And they arrested me because I was not allowed to initiate that conversation. Oh, man. I walked past Nicole Kidman once, and she said hi to me. And I'm like, oh my god, here's my chance. Uh, Cause she used to date Lenny Kravitz, so I know she likes Jewish guys. Uh, like I had a chance with Nicole Kidman. This is my neighborhood, this is Hell's Kitchen. I moved here into Hell's Kitchen 35 years ago. The same time Crack did. Yeah, back then I was afraid to walk through this neighborhood. Now I can't afford to. In 83, it was easier to get yourself an assault rifle than to find an apartment in this neighborhood. So I got an assault rifle. You know how hard it is for a realtor to say no to a guy with a rifle? So uh, the apartment was great, uh, but one thing I didn't know about it is I had a cockroach problem. And I didn't realize this until I walked into my kitchen at four o'clock in the morning, flicked on the light, and they flicked it off. <laughs> you know, I figured I was gonna go get one of those. The cockroaches actually had been in the apartment for so long, their names were on the mailbox. These are, these are signs I should have noticed. But uh, I figured I have to get rid of them. How am I gonna do this? I got myself a roach motel. They advertise that roaches check in, they don't check out. That's complete bull. Uh, my roaches not only checked out, but they stole my ashtrays and towels. I'm trying to figure out what actually makes them go in this thing. It was a scale model of my apartment. I love this neighborhood. My favorite Chinese name restaurant is in this neighborhood. But a year ago, their delivery guy murdered a man who lives three doors over from me. Yeah, so now I just do takeout. That's my public service announcement. I'm Glenn Cohen. I'm thrilled to be here at this event. You guys are welcome. I'm going to bring up a fabulous comedian. I asked her to be on this show. Uh, she was my wife a year ago on a Funny or Die video, and then she had a baby. So I am the method actor. Are you in the room? Michelle. I, she's coming up. Well, we got more comedy then. Uh, Gosh, uh, I don't date that much or that often, and I came to the realization uh, that every woman I slept with in college is over 60 years old today. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, even back then they were over 60. Ladies and gentlemen, the lady who played my wife on the Funny or Die video, I'm thrilled to bring her up here. She is a member of the esteemed Honorable Friars Club. Oh my God!